right, welcome everybody to today's art business workshop. I feel like that video was playing a little, a little like delayed buggy, which tells me my computer is about to melt down, which is always a nice way to start things off. So if the uh, if the inevitable blue screen of death happens on my end and I have to be gone for a minute as I'm restarting my computer, you guys will know why. Um, but welcome everybody, happy Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Uh, my name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here, and sometimes I forget to turn my camera on. Um, I run the marketing department here at Art Store Friends. I've been doing that, guy, okay, almost a decade now, which feels like a really long time. And what's the point of the session? What's the point of today? Some of you guys have been on these things before, and you know my spiel, but some of you guys are brand new, and you've never been on one of these things, and we've drawn you into Art Store Friends ecosystem, and you're like, who are these guys? Why do they send so many emails? Uh, do I trust them? Do I like them? Do they know what they're talking about? Can they potentially help me in my art business? And so we do these sessions as kind of a way of saying like, you know, we're a unique company in that, that all of the top brass in our company, top brass is such a lame term, but all of our top, you know, executives, I guess you would say, are all on video talking directly to customers or potential customers all week long, every week. And we feel like it's the most efficient way uh, outside of being face to face to communicate with somebody. And so, you know, anyone that's been anyone, one of my customers for any period of time will tell you that like, I'm constantly banging the drum to get them to do more video, more video, more video. Why? Because it's the next best thing to being in face to face. It just is. Um, it's that effective. But it also, you know, okay, I'm going to send you a couple of emails and then some blog posts, and then you're going to click on the blog post and, you know, figure out, have to read a bunch of stuff, or do you want to just come and talk to somebody and, you know, get your questions answered? So it works all around, I think. So agenda for today, um, have a video that explains what we do at a high level. It's short, it's good, it's hard hitting, and it will save my voice because as soon as the video is done, then it's right into the Q&A with you guys. One of the things that's really important to me on these sessions is providing value to you guys, whether you are already an Art Storefronts customer, see I threw that one out for you there, Kim, uh, or contemplate becoming an Art Storefronts customer. Um, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. I spent a ton of money on ads. I've worked with a ton of different artists and a ton of different case studies. We have over 10,000 customers. I get to see all of the data from those 10,000 customers, i.e. how are they generating sales, as well as the analytics data. Uh, you know, who is, who, who, who's coming from a Facebook ad? Who's coming from an email? Who's coming from SEO? Who's coming from uh, organic traffic, which is SEO? Who's coming from direct traffic? Uh, who's coming from TikTok and Pinterest? Hint, nobody. Okay, never seen anyone sell any art from TikTok and Pinterest. Kim, don't even give me that finger, okay? You sold like two things. TikTok is the biggest bunch of bullshit in the history of mankind. Anyway, but we'll, I am very opinionated and we can get into these kinds of things, but I, my point is I have really good insight on this because I've been doing it for a while and I have a much bigger data set than most people in terms of artists and photographers. So I wanna be able to help you. I think I can help you and whatever questions you have, pricing, branding, marketing, uh, do you have to have the niche or not have the niche SEO ads, whatever, whatever it is, don't be afraid to ask it in the Q and a portion. Cause I really want to be able to help you. So that being said, going to start the video as the video is rolling along. You'll notice at the bottom of doggone it. Where's my little, I mean, after every weekend, my kids are just in here messing around with all of my things. Okay. Um, at the bottom of your zoom window. Okay. There's this smiley not that what am i talking about the chat thing the little speech bubble and it says chat if you click that thing uh that'll pop out a chat box and you can throw questions in there as this thing rolls along i'll try to answer those as it goes uh otherwise i will answer it live and in person after the video is done and then uh, once the video is done we'll raise hands and i'll show you how to digitally raise hands and all of that and then we can get into any and all questions you have so that is the ball game and shane if you're driving drive safely please eyes on the eyes on the road not on the phone he's like i'm parked don't worry about it um, I always, I always tell the story just cause it's hilarious. You know, when I was a kid, it was like the Jetsons and like the promise of the Jetsons was like the video phone. You know, we totally have the video phone now. It just kind of happened. But I once had, um, a UPS driver come on one of the sessions and he's in his UPS truck with his whole brown uniform on. And he's like this bouncing around and he's got the phone on the top and he's asking questions. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold that thought. He would grab a package, go run and deliver it and come back and then come back and think. And I was like. This is so hilarious. I, I'm willing to talk to you as long as this is going. Like, technology is just amazing. Okay, I'm gonna start this video. It's informative. It's good. I will see you guys as soon as it's done on the other side. 
All right, guys, this is Patrick. <clears throat> Welcome to today's webinar. Really excited to have you here. This is going to be from starving artist to thriving entrepreneur, uh, how to grow a successful art business in 2023 and beyond. I'm going to move myself over to here. So the agenda for today <clears throat> is we're going to talk about your art on a website set up to sell art. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive on new customer acquisition. Uh, I'm going to talk about the pricing and lineup that you need to focus on. I'm going to drill into the various different media types that almost no one ever talks about. I'm going to drill into merch at a high level. I'm going to show you some customer inspiration. Uh, and then we're going to talk about marketing uh, your art and our newest offering, which is called Copilot. And so let's dive right in and get started. Uh, your art on a website. Now, this one is pretty self-explanatory. I think most of you guys understand that you need to have your art up on a website. Uh, it needs to be beautifully displayed. It has to have the ability to take orders. Uh, you need the ability to be able to print and ship those orders all without you lifting a finger. And your website needs to have advanced marketing features. You need to have the ability to capture leads. Uh, you need to have the ability to run sales and use discounts and do coupon codes. Uh, it helps if you have pre-order bumps and post-order bumps. We can get into that later. And I don't wanna make all of today specifically about um, art selling websites. I could do an entire deep dive on this uh, that would be uh, really, really crazy. But suffice to say, I've got um, an incredible blog post on this where pretty much almost all artists go wrong. Uh, you can see that behind me and I'm gonna send this to you after the fact. But quickly and succinctly, here's what I would say. The easiest, the best way to sell art, okay, what is it? It's in an art gallery in person in an art gallery. And there is a reason that all art galleries kind of look like all museums. What do you notice about all of them? It is the art on plain white walls, nicely lit up and nothing else. Where all artists and photographers get this one wrong on their website is they have all kinds of fonts and goofy colors and slideshows and audio and who knows what else. So that if you actually saw the art, it would be a miracle. So I'm gonna send you this article after the fact that's gonna walk you through all of the things that you need your website to do. I don't wanna make today's session just about the website. Um, we do offer websites as a business at Art Storefronts and I will send you some customer examples uh, of what ours look like after the fact. But I wanna make today's session more about the hard hitting stuff you don't hear anywhere else. Uh, the things that you've likely not been taught, the things that no one discusses. And so that's when we get into this concept of new customer acquisition, okay? So if I was to ask you a question, how many new customers did you acquire last year, okay? Uh, how would you respond to that? And, and what I normally get is, uh, Patrick, what? What are you talking about? Well, let's define it, okay? A new customer is defined as someone new that makes a purchase uh, uh, of any product in your lineup. And it can be for any dollar amount, okay? It can be for $5, it can be for $5,000, $50,000, anything in between. The important thing here is that you retain their email for marketing purposes. Now, why is this so important? There are only three ways, three, count them to grow an art business. There's bring new customers in the door, which is the one everyone focuses on all the time. How do I get a new customer? How do I get my art in front of new eyeballs? Okay, that's number one. Number two, it's get more revenue out of your customers at the time of purchase. We call this AOV, average order value. And then the third way is to get existing customers to come back and purchase again, okay? But all of this starts with acquiring a new customer. And, in this business, okay, the force multiplier of all force multipliers, uh, probably one of the greatest things about being an artist or a photographer is this notion of collectors, okay? The number of collectors an artist or a photographer has uh, represents essentially the base salary to any business. And what is a collector? A collector is someone defined that will purchase multiple pieces of your art over the course of the years. You keep creating and creating and creating and they just keep buying and buying and buying. It's one of the phenomenons uh, of this particular industry. And this pyramid here, and I'll get myself out of the way so you can see it, represents this entire business so succinctly. It all starts with a transaction, a new customer is acquired. You do regular and consistent marketing and that brings them back again. 
that customer buys again. Some percentage will buy again and again and turn into collectors. When you understand this and how important this is to a business, it fundamentally changes the way you operate your business. You have to make sales to new customers. You have to market consistently to those new customers. Some percentage of those folks are going to turn into collectors, and those collectors are going to be with you for the rest of your art creating life. It is the lifeblood uh, of any art or photography business. I've often explained that it's the base salary. It's the 401k, right? It is the, what you get paid just for creating and getting out of bed in the morning, but it all starts with acquiring a new customer. And so here's the rub though, okay? Here's the rub. Let's just say you're out there doing awesome marketing. You're creating the awesome art, you're doing awesome marketing. And these folks get drawn into your ecosystem. It could be you did an in-person there a show or you're posting on Instagram or a Facebook post or your artist hanging in a dentist office, whatever it is. If those folks are exposed to you, your awesome art and your marketing message and they leave without buying, they're gone. The masks say they're gone for good. They are now watching cat videos, the cat's playing tetherball in this case, and they're never coming back. And it's very, very important to understand that. And so we need to do everything that we can as artists and photographers to set ourselves up to acquire as many new customers as possible. How do we do that? Um, and I'm going to get into that in a second, but I want to, I want to offer this framework because I think it's very, very important and it's, it's not something that you'll hear anywhere else. I like to operate under a 10 X new customer acquisition framework. It is your goal. It's the goal for all of my customers at art storefronts. It is my goal for you. Number one, here's how it works. You take the number of new customers that you acquired last year. Again, someone that purchases anything from you in which you retain the information, namely an email address, so you can market to these folks in the future. So take that number, multiply it by 10, and that is your target for 2023. Now let's just break those masks down. Let's say hypothetically that you acquired 70 new customers last year in 2022. Okay, awesome. Let's multiply that by 10. That gives us the number 700. That gives us a monthly target of 58 new customers a month and a daily target of two new customers a day, okay? Two new customers a day. Are you crazy, Patrick? Are you out of your mind? Do you think I'm gonna be selling two pieces of wall art a day? There's no way that's crazy. And I'm here to tell you, it's not crazy. When we break these numbers down and we look at these masks, okay, 58 a month, two a day, we can start solving for that. It's not some pie in the sky number. What are we going to need to do as an artist or photographer to have a lineup such that we might acquire two customers a day, okay? And how we're gonna get there is going to be through our lineup, our pricing and our lineup. Now, side note, another thing I'm gonna send you after this webinar ends in the email is, is a podcast episode I've rec recorded on this. The Art Marketing Podcast has over 500,000 downloads and over 200, I think, iTunes five-star reviews. So it, this is a very hard-hitting podcast and, and I did a deep dive on this notion of how many new customers did you acquire last year. Anyway, I'm gonna send that to you. But I wanna get into pricing and lineup. This is the secret sauce of how we are going to put ourselves in a position to be able to acquire these new customers. Some percentage are going to come back and buy again and then turn into collectors, the holy grail of this business. If we're going to hit that 10x goal, okay, our pricing and lineup needs to be set up for best practices. What does that look like? To get this right, to stand the best chance, you need items priced under $100 you need items priced from $100 to $1,000, and you need items priced over $1,000. Additionally, you need to have non-wall art as part of the lineup. Let's get into it. And you know, everyone always responds, Wait, why? What, what are you talking about? I don't have any of that going on. This bell curve here, okay, what I like to call the budget bell curve, is universally true for everyone. It's true for me and my marketing and art storefronts. It's true for you. You're out there doing fairs and shows, let's say, or you're marketing on Instagram, or you're you're having a gallery show, or again, your, your art is hung in a dentist's office or a doctor's office, whatever the case may be. You're gonna draw people into your ecosystem as a result of those marketing efforts that are gonna fall somewhere on this bell curve, okay? At one end, you've got the no budget, and I'll get myself out of the way, the no budget folks, okay? These folks don't 
don't have any money. Then you get into the low budget and then the center of the bell curve, the medium budget, folks, that's your average, your sweet spot. Then it goes down to high budget and then it ends with the whales. It doesn't matter who you are, okay? This is what your audience that you're gonna attract into your ecosystem is gonna look like. It is incumbent upon you if you wanna get the most ROI, return on investment from those marketing activities to have prices for everyone on this bell curve, okay? When you do, you're putting yourself in the position to stand the greatest chance to acquire a new customer no matter where you are, no matter who you're doing, no matter who you get the art in front of. And the crazy thing about this bell curve, what no one understands, it is not a fixed entity, okay? People are going up and down this various different curve throughout their entire lives. And the ones that are on the low end today will probably be on the high end tomorrow and vice versa. So we don't worry about that. We don't have to worry about that. By focusing on our pricing and lineup, we just need to have something for everyone on this curve. And if we're gonna hit our 10X customer acquisition goal, we have to have prices for everyone on the curve, okay? Again, this pyramid is the whole ball game. New customers get acquired, you market to them consistently, some small portion become collectors, and those collectors, once you start stacking those guys up, that is how you have an incredibly successful and growing art of photography business. It's just that simple. It's always been this simple. It is just a volume game, the number of new customers acquired, okay? So the non-wall art part. This is so important, this is so critical. So many people gloss over this. So many artists and photographers fail to understand this. Not everybody is ready to buy wall art right now. Not everybody, when you catch them with an Instagram post or they come to your website as a result of an email or they see you at a show in there, not everybody is ready to buy wall art right now. So when you only have wall art in your lineup, there are a whole bunch of people that like you like what you're doing creatively, like the vibe that you're putting out there, and yet you don't have anything for them to purchase because you don't have non-wall art as your lineup, they're gone, they're watching the aforementioned cats playing tetherball video and the masks say they're never coming back, okay? You have to have items in your lineup that represent uh, 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 impulse type of buys that represent, I don't have to consult uh, with my significant other and go and measure my wall and do all of these various different things. And so many get this wrong and it is so critically important. And so, you know, I also have also a, a, an extremely deep dive blog post, you see it behind me on, on how to price your art and it goes into all the various different ways that you can set your lineup and how to think about how to get zero to 100 and 100 to 1,000 and 1,000 over. I'm going to send this to you after the fact, totally recommend you read it, it's an incredible piece of content. So putting this together, you know, the new customer acquisition sweet spot is having your pricing and lineup set having consistent marketing and having non-wall art is a part of your lineup. When you have that, okay, you've hit the sweet spot. You're cooking with gas. If you look at this image behind me, there's tote bags, there's postcards, there's small paper prints, there's originals and limited editions on the wall. She's hit, Kelly is hit in this case, all of those variables in one little wall in her gallery. And it is so, so important, but don't worry, I'm gonna get into the lineup and explain it. And so, it's just critical to understand if we're gonna 10 extra new customers acquired, we've gotta get your lineup in shape. So let's talk about the five main media types that I believe all artists and photographers need to have, they need to be experts on, they need to, they need to be able to articulate, and most importantly, they need to have in their lineup. There are five main media types, okay? Fine art paper, uh, some like the textured fine art paper, some like gloss of their photographers. It doesn't matter. You just need to have one. You need to have canvas. You need to have metal. You need to have acrylic. And believe it or not, wood. Wood is an extremely popular media type, and there's some folks that absolutely love it. And so let's get into these, okay? Why do you need to have all these media types, all right? Why do they need to be on hand at all times? And I'm going to get into that in terms of samples in a second. You know, I always use this analogy, okay? And it goes like this, like if I was gonna hire you to sell kitchen knives for me door to door, when you knocked on those doors, what would you have in your hand? You'd have the knives, wouldn't you? 
Of course you would have the knives. You would have to be a pretty damn good salesperson or saleswoman to be able to knock on a door with a catalog and say, hey, you want to buy my knives here? Look at my catalog. No, you have to have the actual media types in your hot little hand. And let me tell you, your customers don't know. Your customers are reliant upon you, the artist of the photographer, to be a subject matter expert, okay? You need to be able to explain the subtle differences between canvas and why it's awesome and acrylic and metal and wood. We don't know. Normal consumers do not know. You are meant to, this is what you're selling. You are meant to be the subject matter expert in this. And also never assume you are smarter than your customer, okay? They might re really like a certain media type and you may not even offer it because you don't like it personally. You need to be able to show and tell and you need to be able to sell. Uh, you need to be able to take these five media types with you, okay? Uh, are you going somewhere in your car? You should have the five of them uh, uh, as samples to be able to show off. Going to hang some work in a customer's house, they're getting an original. Why wouldn't you take the samples with you, the five media types with you in a little stack and be able to show them off. Oh, you're interested in some art for a bathroom? Well, have you seen what acrylic looks like? Acrylic is amazing. It's a beautiful media type. Very, very important. Also why it's important to have these fine made media types on hand. Zoom calls, video calls, being able to film them quickly. We have customers on a regular basis. I'm going to tell a story about this in just a moment and show you with pictures. But it is critically important to be able to educate people over a Zoom call, over over a, a, a Facebook uh, Messenger live chat, or, or a FaceTime, or however you're doing it, what the media types look like. And then, of course, live art shows, in-person shows, very important to be able to articulate what it is that you're selling. So the good news is, is that you can get an entire stack of samples of very, very small samples and be able to have it with you at all times. They do not need to be big. They do not need to be huge. And I'll, I'll grab one up here really quickly and turn my camera on and show you. Like, look, here's a tiny paper print. I'm showing it to you on video. I'm showing you black, wired, ready to hang on your wall. It's beautiful, right? I've got it with me and it's on my person at all times. And I've, I've got some videos here that I can show you what these ones look like individually, right? Like you need to be able to show paper. This is the textured fine art paper. You need to be able to show gloss if you're the photographer, show what the glossy prints look like. Uh, you need to be able to show what canvas looks like and, and the fact that it's printed edge to edge and the fact that it's gonna hang on the wall and it doesn't need to be framed and also to metal and how thin metal is. Oh, you're decorating a bathroom, metal's incredible. Uh, it can get wet and sweat. It's not gonna be a problem, it's ready to hang. And then so too with acrylic, and so too with wood, okay? It is critical that you have an entire stack of these samples on hand at all times, as well as the fact of you offering them on their website. Now, I've got an interesting story here. I can articulate what this looks like in the real world. Uh, and what have we learned so far? Number one, the importance of having samples on hand. You need to be the subject matter expert. Never think you are smarter than your customer. If you don't like a particular media type, it does not matter. Let your customer decide what media type they want. They are smarter than you are. They are the customer. Number three, small sizes are perfect for quick video selling. And, and then number four, the easiest customer to get is the one that you've already had, right? There's only three ways to grow an art business. Acquire a new customer, get more money out of them when they purchase, or get an existing customer to come back. And so this is a customer of ours. Uh, her name's Havelina, call her Hava. And she had someone interested in a piece of art. And it's a very interesting story. This gal was riding the subway from Brooklyn into the city for work. And she starts messaging Hava, hey, I'm interested in some of your art. And she was interested in this piece to the right, okay? And she's trying to figure out, but I'm not sure. I don't know what media type to get. Should I get acrylic uh, or photo paper, wood, etc.? And so Hava, because she had her samples on hand, said, no problem. Let me send you some quick video clips and you'll better understand. She sent her the video clips and she made a decision. It was wood in this case. She really wanted to have it because it will sit right on a shelf and be propped up, right? The reason that this sale happened was that Hava had the media types on hand and she was an expert at being able to articulate them. Critically, critically important stuff. Leverage your samples in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is when you're individually selling, whether digitally or in person. Samples, okay, 
eliminate the friction of making a purchase. It's why it's so important that you have them on hand. Your job is to just display the options, okay? They get to decide what goes on their wall, or in this case, what goes on their bookshelf, right? And it's fantastic for you, the artist or the photographer, to be the subject matter expert and always be able to go the extra mile to get the sale over the line and eliminate the friction. You know, Zoom calls, video chats, FaceTime messages, text messages, all of it, okay? It all works. Next, I wanna get into merch types, right? Non-wall art is a part of our lineup, critically, critically important. And again, I get back to this 10X customer acquisition, how art and photography business are actually grown. If you're gonna be acquiring two customers a day, okay, that is, that is heartbreaking. That's like, you have gotta be kidding me, but guess what? It's not difficult with merch. That is how we solve for this. It is just really hard. And there are very few artists and photographers out there selling two pieces of wall art a day. So when you when you realize that merch gets you there, uh, it changes and it fundamentally changes the game. And I want to say that it does not matter. Okay, it does not matter what the merch is. All right, uh, us at Art Storefronts, we have a myriad of offerings. There's yoga mats and puzzles and cell phone cases, and there are calendars and greeting cards and coasters and tote bags, a whole a whole myriad of products. Some of my customers hand paint wooden spoons. Some are selling stickers. Uh, some are doing photo books. It does not matter what it is, as long as you have non-wall art is a part of the lineup. These are local, low commitment, low friction buys. These are ways for the people that you attract into your ecosystem to reward your creativity because they're not ready to buy wall art right now. Now, I wanna show you some customer inspiration, some examples of what this looks like, right? Of the marketing that you're gonna be able to do when you offer something that's a little bit different. And you can see I've got the, I'm gonna get my fat head out of the way. They, there's Instagram handles in here. So if any of these artists pique your interest, you can go and follow them and you can see how they're doing their marketing. In this case, this is a gal named Candace Seslow and she does a great job with the tote bags, merchandising these products. She's got her dog in it, it's on brand. She's got this beautiful shot right next to the ocean. Staying on the dog theme for a second, uh, this is Allison Cantrell. She specializes in custom pet portraits. And you can see she's got the pet portrait. She's got a beautiful one on a throw pillow. She's got one on a wood print up on the wall or an acrylic print up on the wall, rather. Might be metal, actually. And then she's also got coffee mug, okay, with her little dog on it. No matter what, she has got something for everyone on that budget bell curve. And when you offer all these various different merch types, you now have the ability to sell no matter what. Someone can come in, reward you for their creativity, and you will make sales all up and down that budget bell curve. Alan here I love because... His photographs are extremely, extremely colorful, and he does a great job merchandising, putting them all together. He's got the tote bag on a bench, and he's got a throw pillow on a shelf in an office and matching coffee cups. You know, he can layer all of these merch products up like this and sell them as a set, and somebody's got a great uh, lineup of Christmas gifts to give away. Uh, you know, these, these things are beautiful, and it, they just non-wall art, part of the lineup. You can see how Hava, the, the example from earlier, how she does it, she does a great job we need you a hundred percent of you to have these samples on hand understand what it is that you're selling and be able to show it off in person so fundamentally important and yet almost none of you have the actual products that you sell your creations in the wall art format in the merch format right like Normal human beings, not you artistically talented folks, do not have your incredible powers of visualization, okay? We cannot take an image, a 2D image off your Instagram account and visualize it on our walls like you guys can. We need to see the real thing, the thing that we're lusting after, the thing that we want to have in our hot little hand, right? Here is a wood print of your photo of Posiotano. I need to be able to see that I can put that on a shelf in my house that it's easy to hang. It fundamentally changes the game when you have your samples on hand and especially when you have non-wall art samples as well. And so again, this entire equation, it becomes solvable when you have the prices zero to 100, okay? 100 to 1,000, 1,000 plus. Non-wall art is a part of the lineup. 
critically, critically important. And a final point on merch, like I get so much pushback uh, uh, from artists and photographers out there. Patrick, I would never sell merch. I'm not going to sell any of this cheap tchotchke crap. To which I reply, when is the last time that you went into a museum that did not have a gift shop? Don't worry. I'll wait. Go ahead and let me know what museum that was. If Van Gogh's art can be on the wall and you can buy a calendar of Stormy Night in the in the gift shop, or Starry Night rather, in the gift shop, uh, along with everything else, it's okay for you to sell this stuff too. There is a reason these museums have a gift shop. They're businesses at the end of the day, right? So understand the importance of having the non-wall art. And further... You're not going to make a ton of money on merch. No one does, not unless you're selling millions of them. It does not matter, okay? I've spent my life as a digital marketer trying to get folks' attention. In today's day and age, that means the social media sites. It means advertising on them. But guess what? I can only get your attention when you're on your cell phone or when you're on your computer. Your merch products go the places no Facebook ad or no Instagram ad or post or email can, okay? It goes into your customer's real world physical life. They might come from you and buy that pillow that's behind me. And that pillow might sit on that chair for three years. And every day they look at it and their cat sits on it. And then guess what? All of a sudden, they're ready to buy wall art. Who is gonna be top of mind to those folks, all right? Uh, uh, when they're ready to buy wall art, you are because you got that merch in there. You know, I, I contemplate the stickers, right? Like, I don't want to sell stickers. That's so cheesy. But guess what? I came to your booth. You were having a show there. I liked what you did, but I wasn't ready to buy wall art. I bought a package of your stickers for five bucks. You got my email address. I took that sticker and slapped it on my garage fridge. Now, every day that I go out to my garage fridge to get a drink, you are top of mind. I am looking at your art every single solitary day. And now I'm ready to purchase wall art. I just bought my second home. And guess who's top of mind? It's you. You're the one getting those sales. So it's so, so important. You have to include the merch. Next, I want to talk about marketing your art, okay? It's consistency, you guys. Consistency is where 99.5% of artists and photographers fail. It is their biggest miss. It's just not marketing consistently. And I get it. It's difficult to do so. None of you like marketing. None of you want to do the marketing. You all just don't want, you just want to create and you want someone to take care of everything else. And we instinctively know this as a business at Art Storefronts, which is why we've created what we're calling Copilot. And it's the most advanced art marketing system on the planet. It is your art marketing done for you by art marketing professionals, uh, individuals on our in-house team. And what do we do exactly? We post to Facebook for you. We send emails on your behalf. We post to Instagram for you and we run sales campaigns for you. And we do all of this without you having to lift a finger. Why would we do that? And I'll tell you, it's because you guys are your own worst enemy. Number one, you don't like marketing. Number two, uh, you're tech challenged, most of you. Number three, you're terrified of running sales. You never run enough of them. You're a perfectionist, okay? And the end result of that perfectionism is not posting enough, not emailing enough, and not doing it consistently, okay? None of you do it consistently. A great many of you don't believe in marketing and sales, and so you end up phoning in the efforts because you don't have the courage of your convictions, which is why we created Copilot. And when you combine the best art selling website on the planet, your work and Copilot is when things really start taking off, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna show off a couple of quick testimonials of the results of this brand new service that we're offering, which is blown away. You go from situations where you're not gaining followers and you start gaining followers. Why? Because you're actually posting consistently and daily and several times a day. Uh, you go from not making sales at all because you don't believe in the sales and marketing process, and all of a sudden you are making sales. It starts small. Uh, it was it was coasters in in Jason's case here. Then you start picking up steam. The marketing goes out regularly and consistently, and you're selling your first original from the website uh, and a couple of canvas prints, right? It, it heats up from there. Because we are sending emails on your behalf, all of a sudden you're bringing sales up and down the stack, three sales in this case, uh, for not even having to lift a finger, right? 
um, it starts helping and working immediately. In Ariel's case, uh, she was eight days into our co-pilot service and making sales to strangers, uh, small at first, but that's how it starts. And then it really, really starts picking up steam. Pete here was down sick with COVID uh, and ended up selling five pieces because we were running all of his marketing for him. Uh, Kim uh, sold over $5,000 in one sale uh, in seven originals as a result of our marketing efforts on her behalf. So where do we go from here? I've chewed up 30 minutes of your time. One, thanks for sticking it out to the end of this webinar. Two, oh, might as well turn that thing off. All right, done and done with the video. Hope you guys found that somewhat uh, entertaining. You know, it's it's interesting, especially in the context of... Um, you know, posting and posting consistently and everything else. Like one of my primary jobs is motivating my customers and keeping my customers inspired and teaching my customers how to market, right? And one of the things I'm constantly pounding into their head is consistency, 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 consistency. If you don't do it consistent, there's no missed days. It's very difficult to do something like that and maintain that position if you're not eating your own dog food, right? If you're not practicing what you preach. And, you know, I've got Instagram on the phone pulled up over here and I can look at this and I can scroll back to, I, I don't even know, all of these posts were done in the last two days, right? Like I'm on here, the CEO is on here, we're making videos nonstop, we're going live nonstop, we're responding to comments nonstop. Why? Uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not for our health, right? Oh yeah, thank you, Emily. Uh, you guys gotta tell me when I, don't turn the dog on, camera on. Um, it's not for our health, right? Like we practice what we preach and we try it and we try it all the time and we are constantly executing and learning and getting better and better and better at it. And man, I got into it this weekend. You know, this, this gal, this gal, um, and she, maybe she's on here. I don't know. Um, this gal called, called us out and was like, you know, you've got, you've got 50,000 followers on, on Instagram and some of your reels are only seen by like 500 or 600 or 700. I mean, what did you guys do? Are you frauds? Did you buy followers? And I ended up going down the rabbit hole on that whole entire operation as well. But a quick aside, okay, a quick aside. We live in this world where these social applications in some regards are absolutely freaking evil, okay? Because they give us dopamine hits and these dopamine hits make us happy. I got likes, I got comments, I got fans, I got followers, I got, I got uh, uh, impressions, all of these various different things, right? There is no button for any of those damn things on an ATM machine, and they never will be, okay? And this gal, this gal was like calling me out, and it, again, I probably need to apologize to her because on Sunday I was, I was, I was loaded for bear, and I, and, I, and, I, and I came. It doesn't matter. The likes don't matter. The comments don't matter. The shares don't matter. The retweets don't matter. All of that is nonsense, okay? Those are stupid vanity metrics. The only thing that matters is did someone contact you and purchase your art or not, okay? Nobody wants a hobby. Everybody knows what a hobby is, okay? A hobby is where you express yourself creativity and it does not bring any money to you whatsoever. If you have a hobby, that's fantastic. I've got hobbies, I like them, but we're here because we wanna have a business, okay? And when you wanna have a business, the only thing matters is the bottom line. Is the art or photography selling? I don't care how many views your stupid reel got. You know, you put all these nice images together and this fancy music and it got viewed by 10,000 people. Did anyone purchase any art? Did anyone get on your email list? Because if it's not those two things, it is a waste of time and energy and effort. And the gal was like attacking us saying like, you're only getting like 500 or 600 views on that. I could care less about the views. I am not making content on Instagram that everyone is gonna like and retweet and share, okay? I'm not going for a shotgun blast. I am going for a sniper rifle attack in which two or three people hear it and they're like, wow, that's interesting. Maybe I'm gonna go, this guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about, let me go investigate more. And then they potentially become a customer because I care about bottom line results for this business. I'm compensated on it. I'm not out here trying to get likes and comments and shares. You can tell I'm a little fired up about this, but. There's so much nonsense that goes on in the social media, okay? There's just so much nonsense, all right? But Instagram is critically important for you guys, okay? Facebook, secondarily, uh, a little bit less so. And then TikTok is not even on the list, Kim Winberry, okay? Don't even start with me. And I'll get, Kim's a customer, so <laughs> I've been yelling at her for a long time, she'll tell you. Um, you know when we, we're contemplating buying a product, right? We saw something on the internet or whatever it is. What do we do? 
we, we run a credit check on it, right? And that credit check is usually going to Amazon and seeing what kind of reviews the product has. Is it getting panned? Is it getting good reviews? Do people feel good about it? Okay, maybe I should buy that product. If someone gets exposed to your art, however it might be, they go to Instagram for the credit check. It's like the most important site for an artist in today's day and age. And as it turns out, a ton, what is Instagram? A giant visual search engine. What is it that you guys create? Visual things. Very, very smart network to be on, all right? And it doesn't matter about all these likes and comments and retweets and everything else. It's, that part is irrelevant. What is important is a whole lot of prospective buyers are there and you have the ability to get their attention. That's it. That's it. And, you know, when we talk about Copilot, that new service that we have in Copilot, we're getting better results with this than we've ever seen. We are getting more positive testimonials from our customers than we've ever seen. And the service is still so new. It's still so bumpy. We've had, we've had some customer service issues with it and everything else. The reason it's winning is not because we, uh, uh, art storefronts that's writing on the content, are wizards of smart and so good at, we, at what we do, although we are. It's the, that there's low hanging fruit because none of our damn customers are marketing consistently ever, okay? The way that social media works, and like even, even you know, it, it, it's constant hand-to-hand -hand combat with me. Like, we have some customers that are really concerned about their brand and the way that their profile looks and making sure that that grid is all good and they're on brand, okay? Being worried about being on brand at the detriment to the bottom line is the road to hobbydom. It just is. No one cares about what your brand is, okay? Are you selling art? Yes. Are you being authentic? Okay, then you can potentially have a brand. But otherwise, these people over-index on it and it gets you absolutely nowhere. But because the lives that we live are so fragmented, are so instant gratification, are so bite-sized, attention spans going down, all of which I 100% believe is real, oftentimes with social media, especially... Uh, um, highlighted by the fact that so few of your actual followers see what you post anyway, it really just comes down to serendipity, okay? It comes down to the fact that I'm in line at the supermarket, I rushed in to pick a lane, now I'm committed, and I didn't fully see that that person had 685 items in their cart. I'm here for a little while, okay? I pull this thing out, and I'm thumbing around, and because you decided to post in that little window, you got my attention right? It's kind of like fishing, right? Like who's going to win in the game of fishing? The captain that knows the most, but he only goes fishing one hour a week or the captain that doesn't know as much, but he's on the water 200 hours a week, right? The guy who's on the water 200 hours a week is going to win because serendipity is going to happen. He's going to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, the fish are going to be at the surface, right? One of those moments of the 200 hours versus the one hour. So I get, I get fired up about that. I realize that it's frustrating and it's daunting because no one likes posting on social media. You know, it's aggravating. You have to think about it. There's a cognitive load, uh, but you really can't do it enough. You honestly can't do it enough. Like no chance. Like, uh, you know, every single solitary person can be doing more of it, can be doing it more consistently and you will reap the results uh, if you do so. And if you do so on a consistent basis and you don't miss time, you don't miss days, you know, you don't miss weeks, you, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a big, big deal. But anyway, enough of me yapping. Let's get to your questions. Um, if you're one of the brave ones that has your camera on and you have a question, you can usually just raise your hand uh, and I can bring you on. I'll see you. For everyone else, at the bottom of the Zoom window here, you see me moving my mouse over it. There's a little smiley face that says reactions. You can click that thing and raise your hand digitally speaking. You can see I just did that. Um, it, and then it shows up in the, like, the little participants window and then it's like, hey, I know this person has a question. Um, and then I can bring you on. You can ask anything about anything. Um, all fair game. Anything about we do at our storefronts, anything you're struggling with in your business, uh, or anything in between. So, okay, I'm going to start with Jennifer and then figure out what you want to rant about, Kim. We'll go to you next. Jennifer, don't look at the phone, just talk. Don't look at the phone, just talk. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks. I have some things that would be like a flat type of thing, but I also do some fiber art. And mm -hmm. so I'm just wondering if you have any suggestions about that, because I can see that there are a bunch of opportunities for merchandise I never thought about. Yes. Go ahead. And um, so kind of if you have a comment on that and then I'm going to get back off because I am driving. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just don't look at the phone. Thanks. Just don't look at the phone. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'm good. <laughs> and, and so this is the interesting part. And, and you saw me go on the, or maybe you heard me go on the rant on pricing. The pricing, Absolutely. The, yeah, the pricing matrix is like the, the most, or whatever you want to call that thing, like the pricing guidelines is the most important thing that you could possibly have. That's Kim, that's what I'll bring you on next and we'll talk about what your lineup looks like. The Perfect. having a price for everyone in that budget and then having non-wall art is, are, are the two most important things. And I don't care okay. how you, I don't care how you get there. It doesn't matter to me in the slightest, mm -hmm. but when you mm -hmm. understand 
that the easiest customer to get is the one that you already have, i.e. it's much easier to get a customer to come back than it is to go and get a new one. And some portion mm-hmm. of your new customers are going to turn into collectors. So it really is just a, okay. it's a volume game. Okay. So number of years selling art, having the right pricing range equals way more new customers, equals way more of those new customers coming back and being repeat customers, equals some of them turning into collectors that will buy seven to 10 to 20 to 30 things from you. And it's all just mass, right? So you right. have you have the option for all of those various different things. And your business will so fundamentally change when you do. And on the low end, everyone's like, you know, again, I'm not selling, I'm not selling merch. I'm not selling the tchotchke. It's going to, you know, cheapen what them. I do. <laughs> Everybody does that all the time, right? And they tell me that all the time. And I always say the same response. Like, when's the last museum you went to that didn't have a gift shop? Okay. If I can go into the gift shop and buy a mouse pad with Starry Night on it and then go is not losing any prestige, then whatever the hell you're creating is not going to either, right? That's number one. And then, I don't even know where I was. Oh, number two, okay, I've spent the last 20 years of my life trying to get people's attention in a digital capacity. Unless your computer is on and unless your phone is on, I can't do that, right? I don't have access to mm-hmm. you. The merch can go places, Facebook ads and Instagram ads and posts and emails can't, mm-hmm. right? You know, into your real life, onto the garage fridge, in the kitchen, on the kitchen wall, in a bathroom, wherever it is. And so that's what keeps you top of mind. So it's very, very important. So I'm, I'm 100% on board with anything that you create. And I encourage my customer, like I got co- some customers that hand paint wooden spoons and I do extremely well with them, right? Like it, can, it literally can be anything as long as it's low dollar okay. amount, low commitment, uh, something, something they could purchase on a whim and something that you still get an email address for, right? So that you can right. market to and, it. And I have to say that one of the things that you just opened my eyes to, because I hadn't thought about it that way because of the kind of medium I've been working in, mm-hmm. hadn't thought about trying to make some really nice wall art prints yes. like that maybe I'm not doing an original oil painting, but, and maybe they're not all buying that big fiber piece, but some people would probably do it as reproduction. So I appreciate it. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, hundred percent. And, yeah, and everyone I thinks, just... and, and I stopped your camera because your connection was going in, in and out a little bit generally. And you know, that's the other thing with like the media types Like people, artists have this, have this idea in their head that they want to, they want to dictate what their customers purchase and that they know better. And it's like, you don't know better Get the hell out of the way. The customer knows better. You let them tell you what they want to purchase. It's your job to make sure your creativity is on it and you can articulate the product, right? Um, so we get that all the time where, you know, certain customers don't like metal or they don't like acrylic or they don't like wood and they don't like paper. And it's like, turns out we live on a really diverse planet, okay? Not all of us have the same taste and thank God for that. So just have the media types and have your lineup available and let them decide, right? And even if you don't like it, you can at least show it off and say, Here, this is the one that I like least, right? Um, you know, but it's it, it's important to have the lineup, okay? It's really, really important to have the lineup. Kim, I want you to run, I want you to run from cheapest to most expensive, and you can just say merch, because I know you have like 800 things of merch. Um, <laughs> but what, so, how many, let's do it this way. You have, is your price range have zero to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 plus? Absolutely. What is your most expensive original? Uh, I have a $9,000 original. Okay, so you have a $9,000 original. You yeah. have you have stickers and calendars and greeting cards. I have calendars, that. but I have I have um, refrigerator magnets and coasters and and um, bookmarks and um, water bottles. Water bottles are real real popular. That's super interesting too. In ter- in terms of total new customers that you've acquired this year so far, where are you ballpark? Oh God, I I I add about. 65 new customers a show and i do 20 to 26 shows a year so multiply that out that's there you go and yeah. the majority of the a, a large portion of those come in on the lower price points on the impulse oh price. oh yeah yeah and you i can guarantee booth. i will i will make booth these with with the smaller stuff and with the economy the way it is you can't always count on selling something larger yep and how often do the people, I mean, it's hard to track, right? Because you know, at a point when you're getting to your numbers, you almost, you almost need like a CRM, right? Like a, you know, a customer resource management tool that will tell you. But how many of those that started purchases on Merch came back and bought original wallet? I, I, would, I would say, you know, at this point, it's probably 20%. Yeah, 20%. So there you go. Yeah. So you realize. But I get people coming by and buying. Oh, they want to see what new stickers I have. They want to see what new new stuff I'm carrying. So they might come back and buy more merch and and be on that train for a little while. But yeah, yeah. 
it's just it it's just it's just the the rules of business, right? It's like the rules mm-hmm. of business. Like if you if you have a store, if you have a retail store and like think you had a retail store and it's like you go into the retail store and there's only two aisles and the prices on one aisle starts at seven hundred dollars and the price on the other aisle starts twelve hundred dollars, it's like, okay, that's that's awesome. But you know, I, I, I don't I don't know what the purchase volume is going to do there, right? Like, how many customers are you not acquiring? And then people were like, "Oh, yeah. well, an art gallery is the best way to do it." Um, you know, no, they take fifty percent. No, and... I mean, even, even like the art yeah. gallery model, like you know, there's not that many people in there that are buying every single solitary day. You're not selling the kind of volume you need to to build a list. But anyway, do you do you no. have any personal questions? Any any business related stuff? Oh, um, not that I I just got off of a four day music festival i'm i don't have two brain cells to rub together no you need a nap is what you need those things are exhausting yeah All right. yeah i mean we were working from eight we were in our booth at 8 30 and we weren't leaving till dusk and even then you know we had lights so it was like we were there till 8 30 at night we were doing 12 hour days for four days that's grueling you need you need some downtime go, oh it was great go, go get a margarita <laughs> okay, if you, okay. If, you, if you think of anything else raise your hand um all right guys who else questions Comments, concerns, can be anything about anything. Does someone raise their hand? Well, I, I saw somebody raise their hand and then, no? Oh, yeah, I got you, Shane. Don't worry. I'll go to Shane and then you can let me know whoever's next. Go ahead, Shane. On your, um, on your topic about Facebook and reels and followers, and yeah, yeah. I've seen some of your reels uh, where one of them in particular, you, again, get fired up and yeah, yeah, about, uh, you know, do not boost a post. Oh, God, do don't not get me started on that one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, from someone who's just kind of getting started in this, hey, I think I want to try to sell some of these. Um, how would you then, how do we get from 25 followers to a thousand plus followers without boosting a post or without, uh, you know, you say, don't pay attention to the likes, don't pay attention to, but somehow we've got to get out there to people. Yeah, for uh, sure. For sure. Total, but, total chicken and the egg um, scenario, right? And you yeah, know, it's important when I say the boosting posts, the boosting post is like, you know, w- when you do a post and then it gives you that button yep. at the bottom. I should get out of there. That was loud. Um, you know, it's, it's yep. not a, I'm just going to do that because it's going to the audio is going to play. It's that little simple button. OK. And it's like basically Facebook's uh, 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 sucker bet button. Let me steal your money button, because all it does is it brings a bunch of tired cookers that never buy anything. They're never going to buy anything. So those are not the kind of followers you need, right? And I get dramatic in my rants about it because it doesn't matter. But to your point, if you're not growing your followers, that's usually a good early proxy that you're not growing the business, right? If you're not getting some engagement on post occasionally, you know, how do you measure one post type versus the other post type, right? And all of them, all of all of them are important. But the But who's the, the query, post? Yeah, the query the, 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 the problem with ads and 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 I'm going to put the problem with ads on the tail end of, this, of my rant here in the, in the beginning. Regular and consistent posting, okay? There are some special things you can do around print giveaways, right? Or you, you're going to give away print away for free or whatever it is that you create for free. They have to enter the email address to get in. Then you email everyone else after the fact. But the long and the short of it is, in the beginning, it sucks. It's really hard. You have to do it consistently for a long time, and it's very slow going, and there is no year worse than the first year. Absolutely terrible year. The second thing, going back to the ads, when you, when you run the ads correctly, you do it through the Facebook business manager, in which there is a bunch of advanced tools that make sure that you don't get somebody that just kicks the tires, that you're actually going after quality people. That's number one. But number two, it's very difficult to make it running Facebook and Instagram ads with a low ticket single tra- transaction product or service. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. If, if, if it is a low ticket volume and oftentimes they don't come back and purchase right away, your goose is cooked, okay? Well, what about art, Patrick? People do come back and buy art again, right? Some will turn into collectors and that's correct. But the only real way to, to be successful with Facebook and Instagram ads is to have your entire marketing machine fired up and working, okay? Because each little additional step to the marketing machine makes more ROI, return on investment, out of the ad spend. And sort of sort of like the, the way that I like to analogize it is like, I always go back to fishing. I haven't been fishing in so long, but fishing, I grew up fishing, whatever. You know, you got a boat and I have a boat. Same boat, same captain, same size, right? We both leave the, we leave the dock, but you only have one fishing pole and one lure, right? I go out. 
I've got five. I've got five different rods. I've got nets. I've got lobster pots. I got kites. I've got a harpoon off the front, such that when I go out there, no matter what, I'm coming back with seafood of some kind. Right? You have your one line in the water, and that's the whole situation with ads. Until you get your boat outfit like that you're never gonna be coming home with seafood every single solitary day. So let's define what that is. Art's gotta be up on a website so you can sell it. You have to be doing regularly and consistent marketing. You have to be capturing emails all year long. You have to be posting to those emails all year long. You have to regularly be feeding Instagram. You have to regularly be feeding Facebook. And you have to be doing that all consistently. And then you need to be having sales when the time of year is right. There are certain times of the year where it's important to run a sales campaign. You need to know what that is. You need to be able to execute on all that. Until you can do all of that, you're not ready for Facebook or Instagram ads. You're just not. I I guess it was my thought, and maybe I, I just learned this not too long ago. When I posted something on Facebook, I thought the only ones that saw it were my followers. Apparently, others so do see that. All changed. That all changed when TikTok. Okay, now I'm going to have to go into a little bit of a history lesson here, but it's important you understand it. Up till recently, Meta, okay, which they've now called themselves Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram. Right. Had a monopoly. They had a monopoly on attention. Now, Patrick, what about LinkedIn and what about Twitter and what about Snap? Okay, Snap was it was stealing a little bit of their market share. Okay, a very, very tiny amount, but didn't really get anywhere. TikTok came along and TikTok started eating Instagram and Facebook's lunch. Okay, they really started siphoning off a bunch of users. A bunch of the kids fled over there. It had a better algorithm yeah. in many ways. Da -da 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 -da. As a result of that, the social contract that existed up until that point in time on Facebook and Instagram, which was you post something, some percentage of your followers see it. That's it. That's the social contract. OK, if you, want, if you want more, I mean, yeah, yeah, if you want yeah. more, then you go ahead and pay us in terms of ads. Right. Yeah. Or if you got really, really lucky, your friends and th your friends would share the stuff and it would go viral. Right. But the social yeah. contract was only your friends and followers. So. In order to ward off the competition from TikTok, they created the Reels product, okay? And what happens with the Reels product is Reels get shown to people based on how engaging and how popular they are. That's it. And so you could post a Reel with zero followers. You have one follower. Your mother is following you. And you could post a Reel and get 300,000 views on it. Because uh -oh. Instagram, the algorithm was like, oh, wow, this is really working great. This thing is going to go far and wide. Let's see how it goes. Boom. So th th those are the kinds of things that happen. But it's only reels. It's not a post. Yeah, it's, it's hey, look at this picture I put on my website. That doesn't go anywhere but the followers. But the reels do. Correct. Okay. Correct. But still, yeah, they're, I, they're, they're all still important. I know. Trust me. Don't worry. It's what we, this is what we teach our customers all year long. It takes it takes time to get there. Um, yeah. But but they are really really easy to make. And like once you get the hang of it, like you know, it's it's yeah. It's, I'm yeah. on the other day. My daughter said, no, dad, the music is terrible. Uh, she said, you need to find better music or better sound because that will bring in more followers. And I said, what? I and she said, oh, yeah, that's all part of the algorithm. And I said, OK, you're going to have to come over. She lives somewhere else and, and educate me on how to do this. Yeah. So she's coming tomorrow, actually, to go over that with me. But I had no idea. Like, yeah. just the, mu the music selection at had something to do with it it does on some on, on on others it's not important it's it's more just about the consistency like the consistency is really the only thing that matters right yeah um you know there's certain tricks here or there and there's certain things that work for a little time but it's all fleeting because everything is just constantly in a state of flux new features algorithm change da -da 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 -da. so what's my point in saying that the only thing that you can control is the consistency Right. Yeah. And you learn and you intuitively pick things up as you go. And again, the first year sucks. It sucks. But in terms of how an artist or photographer can reach an audience and get the type of eyeballs on their art from a worldwide audience, there isn't any, there's never been anything else like it. It's still amazing once you get it going, once you get it humming. But that zero to one chicken and egg scenario. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. 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 But once you figure that out and you realize it, you're like, okay. Now I know that, now I'm just gonna start working on it consistently. I'm not gonna let it bog me down and I'm gonna stay at it, right? That's what I'd say. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. But definitely get her to teach you a few tricks. It'll 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 help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like teach teach me some stuff, honey. It'll be helpful. Um, who else, guys? Questions? And I'll read what um what Paul said here, my art is the form of utilizing all original artifacts from Sports World, a theme, very large frame piece, frame can easily be $2,000. Yep. 
Cost five thousand dollars. Totally get that. Yeah, you need to be able to buy pieces as large as I've indicated. Ten thousand dollars, thirty thousand. Do you have any? Do you have a program for something like me? Yeah, I mean, Paul, your situation's not any different. You're gonna have to just get creative on how you would how you would put the memorabilia together at the smaller end of the the scale, you know, to be able to get some lower end price points. But the mass of the mass, there's not there's, there's almost like not a product in the world where people have not figured out some sort of way to get the lower end price points. Um, they're just God, it's so important. It's just so so important. Um, all right, who else? Questions? You guys are shy today. Shy bunch, huh? Oh, I saw that, Chuck. I got you. Okay, April. I feel like Chuck's going to ask one next. Go ahead, April. You're up. I, I, just a short question. I'm in Canada yeah. and you're in the U.S. Is that correct? Correct. So do you represent international too or help oh, yeah, international? Of yeah, yeah, of course. We've got a bunch of Canadian customers. Okay, I, thank the you. Thing, the thing I don't understand is like, where did it all go so damn wrong between the United States and Canada with this damn tariff nonsense? It's like actually a pain in the ass. Like we have, you know, we, we integrate with printers, right? And mm -hmm. so the idea is, is that for the non-originals, when you get an order, you get paid, the printer gets paid, the printer automatically prints it, the printer automatically ships it. So you don't have to touch anything, right? Nice, unless you focus on the marketing. Like, we had to go and get a Canadian one because of the damn tariff issue. Because it just, mm -hmm. it ends up being too much, which is lame, but we do have a Canadian uh, print partner. And so that's what you can use for that. Most of my customers are in the U.S. anyways. <laughs> yeah, well, if they're, yeah, if they're in the U.S., then you got nothing to worry about. You just you just act like a u.s citizen and, and you know that's how the business operates okay yeah thank you yeah thanks everyone all right so somebody else in here raised their hand who was it did somebody i don't know getting shy bunch today you can't just be here to listen to me rant i gotta be boring after a while um what about selling ai someone's asking me on facebook yeah you, you could potentially sell ai but you know, it's it's about the it's about the the, the story, right? Um, I can't tell Chuck. Do you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Good. Gotcha. Go ahead. Hey, it's my year and a half into doing art full time. Mm -hmm. Good for you. And uh, like you said, the first year not so good. Not so good. Second Sucks. year's going better than first so far. Yeah. In the next six months to a year, where? Do you think marketing would change and go to anything different from now or yeah you know it's a it's been such a wild like last three years right um wild in a bunch of sense i mean there's not a single solitary person on this call that wouldn't say the most extraordinary thing that's ever happened in their lives was covid right we got locked in our houses you know for for a long period of time and so everything changed at that point in time especially with like live video and what you could do in that capacity so what do I think will change in the next year? You know, each social network is like multiple social networks with inside a social network. Okay. And they all have their unique nuances. They've all learned the lesson of MySpace. Okay. They came and, and didn't know what they had and put too many ads on it and destroyed the community. I think Instagram is going to be around. I think it's going to be dominant for the next period of time. I think Facebook is going to be around. It's going to be secondarily dominant. Um, most people are saying Facebook's going, going, going by the wayside, but the reality is, is that Mark Zuckerberg is really smart. This is the long game. Once you have the attention, you know, all the daily active users, then it, it's very slow for them to leave. And, you know, despite the fact, I think the headsets are super goofy. Okay. I bought one. I turned it on like three times and now I just leave it dead because otherwise my wife will yell at me because my kids try to put it on here. Right. The point is, at some point in time, those things are going to start winning. Who knows when the heck that is? And Facebook is going to be the best positioned to deal with that when it comes, so you can't ignore Facebook. The the little individual unique aspects of each platform, Instagram stories, Instagram reels, Instagram feed posts, uh, uh, live video broadcasts on either of the two platforms, there's a bunch of change that will happen in that. It always does. But practically speaking, not much. And certainly not much you can stress about, like, you know, not much has changed in the last five years in terms of the dominant players. Mm -hmm. It's just how the content is being produced, you know, on those platforms. So I don't worry about it anymore. I used to, I don't, I just worry about the things that I can control, which again is the consistency. Gotcha. That's the, Appreciate most, it. It's the most important thing. How are you, how are you making your living? Are you doing fairs and shows? Are you selling it all online? What are you doing? Doing some shows and, um, uh, online word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I've done, 
some Facebook ads, like you said, nothing. Yeah. 40, 50,000 people see it, no sales. Yeah, nonsense. You know, it is a waste of money. Correct. But uh, yeah, basically word of mouth. And like this week with LSU in the College World Series, I did a quick painting and started to sell prints from that. And mm-hmm. either I paint stuff I want to, I think will sell, or when, I, when someone does a commission, do that. It's a lot of sports related and uh, pet portraits. Those are two home run knockout drag outs. The, the pet portraits is a very interesting one. I want to talk about that one. I more want to talk about the sports one. The pet portraits one is interesting and is the demand is through the roof. The problem is, is that nobody wants to buy a picture of someone else's pet. They mm-hmm. only want their pet, right? And so it doesn't it doesn't scale as a business. Like we had one gal that was doing like thirty or forty thousand dollars a sale, um, not an individual piece, but she was doing these like hand drawn pet portraits, and she ended up with a carpal tunnel. She's like, I just can't do this anymore, right? Like it's killing me. So she's since moved to digital, and she has she's, she has a decent little business on her hands now. Um, actually, it was in it was in my little slideshow. Allison Cantrell. The sports is mega interesting, right? Because what mm-hmm. most people do is artists and photographers are like, this is what I like. This is what creatively inspires me. This is what I feel enriched to create. I'm going to go and create it. And then I'm going to go see if there's a market for it. Right? So it's basically saying, I'm going to create this thing. And then I'm going to go see if there's a market for it. When you're jacked into something like sports, you're now just reverse. You're reversing that whole process. You're reverse engineering it. You're saying, who's the top player on the top sports league? Well, I'm not worried about whether or not there's an audience for that one. There's an audience. It is a huge audience, and I'm going to create something for that diehard bunch, right? We've got a number of really, really talented um, artists that have done extremely well in the sports niche. So it's a good niche. You know, you're on the right track. And there's great news jacking, right? And there's great serendipity in it. Like, you know, one of our oldest customers, this gal Meg, went to KU and... Got a licensing deal with the school, did the Jayhawks, uh, did really great with the Jayhawks, and then also did the Chiefs, right? And she's, it, it's really smart what she did. She gets into the, let me see if I can find her on here. She gets into, or somebody works at the stadium, right? And when, when they're working at the stadium and the Chiefs keep winning the Super Bowl, you know, because she's like Kansas City gal, the Chiefs keep winning the Super Bowl and she goes in and she makes these pieces where there's actual confetti from the your world champions, you know, your Super Bowl champions, and layers it all in there and does that. And That's awesome. the Chiefs keep winning the Super Bowl. So it's like she gets ready, and she's got her Chiefs stuff, and then they're back at the playoffs again, and it's like ding, 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 right? So, you know, mm-hmm. you, you, get these, you get these additional bites at the apple once you go and create it, right? Kind of like with the celebrity art. It's like you create the art about a celebrity, and then celebrity has a birthday every year, right? Another marketing moment coming up on the calendar where you get to push it, where people are super into it. So I would follow her. I'm sorry, that annoying. I got to talk on the phone. All right, that's that. But so, what are you thinking? Are you thinking of coming on board, or you're just curious? Uh, curious. Uh, what's the details on your like? What y'all doing all? Yeah. So our price points and stuff. What we're, we're significantly different than everyone else. And I encourage anyone that has any interest in what we do, go and see a demo. A demo is basically our, you know, test driving the software, so to speak. We're half software, half postgraduate university that teaches marketing and business to artists and photographers all year. So you got the university product and then you have the website with all the bells and whistles and everything else. Um, so, you know, where things are quite different, there's a lot of companies out there that will give you a website. Fantastic. We educate you and we never stop, stop educating you for the rest of your life. And that's how it works. Sessions like these, every single solitary week, asking questions, myself in them, CEO of our companies in them, our top marketing guys, our top growth guy. We just never stop teaching you because that's what it takes. You need an army. So like Mm -hmm. any website company, we start a monthly fee, but the university, you essentially pay a one-time fee to get in and it goes to the army of folks that are going to support you on your journey for the rest of your life. So that's how we're significantly different than, you know, any other company out there. Yeah. But, but I would I would get a demo and see it. They know what all the plans are, all the pricing, all the bells, all the whistles, because there's a couple of different options. If, if you're interested, right. no, no, no hard. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, there's one other one I want to show you, too, while we're here. Hold on so I can get this without the audio. I think it's Courtney Wall. Have you seen her stuff, Kim? She's killing it in the sports niche, too. I, don't, I think she was like a professional softball player and started that way. 
Is that it? No. What is her handle? Shoot. Um, that's kind of a common name, so there's probably 400 names. If you email me, if you email me after this over and say, hey, send me Courtney's account, I'll remember and I'll send it to you. But she's, dude, she's done everybody and she gets the in, she gets the inside hookup too where like you know joe joe Namath's like okay paint me and you know, joe Namath and i'll give, give this thing away at a golf tournament or whatever right um so there's, there's a bunch of very very interesting niches along with that gotcha i'll, I'll send you a message okay next nice one Yeah, Doug. So, you know, Doug's like, what's the alternative to joining art storefronts? Because it's very expensive. That's the whole point. It doesn't matter what the alternative is. You know, like the reason that we're very expensive is because we realized that the the only way that you can have successful customers is if you teach them how to build their businesses all year long. Otherwise, you know, take your pick. They're all the same. It's just a website. It's not going to fix your problem because you're not fixing the real problem, Doug, which is the marketing, sadly. Um, it's not what everybody wants to hear, but that's how it goes. Yeah, I got you. Emily. Go ahead. And thank you again for the the uh, cameras off. You're good. You're unmuted. Oh, you okay? There it goes. Hold on. Can First of all, yeah. new video. Nice. I dig it. New what? New video. Oh yeah. What the intro video? Oh yeah. I switched. Yeah. I, yeah, I switched it up a while ago. I switched it up a while ago. <laughs> Seen it. So so good stuff. Do you know? Um, do, you, do you know what's funny that we found? In hmm. you know. You, she's been on like ten of these sessions, or probably been on twenty of these sessions. Way more than that. Way yeah. more than that. So she, she knows I, I don't bullshit. Do you know what we found? So, I went from running this three days a week, okay, essentially, this mm -hmm. webinar, down to one day a week, and the mm -hmm. outreach team would do the 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 tours of the software on Wednesday and Friday, and we saw a huge hit in our business as a result of it. Because we weren't on educating customers and explaining the way things work and how it goes and being real and telling the truth, right, and all of that. So I'm now back to three days a week. So I'm going to be experimenting with all kinds of all kinds of stuff. I noticed you you move from three days a week because yeah. you know I don't all the time. But if I'm not doing anything, I'm just like working on something. I'm like, oh, I'll listen. Yeah. You know, I'll listen. See if I, I learn something or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, so only one day a week. That then, you know, yeah. that might not be a good day for me, right? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, makes it way harder. Yeah. Thanks for being back again. Yeah, my <laughs> it's pleasure. great. i work for you, but, you know, I hope you're having fun. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, oh, so, anyway, I just want to say the, the, the guy with the sports mm -hmm. stuff, uh, a suggestion, Chuck. and this is Chuck something. Is uh, this isn't my, oh, wait, I have a different thing to say first, and then I'll get back to that. All right. It's like, I have a painting that I sold for $300, and in the past, like, back in 2021. Sold for three hundred dollars, and it has made me in the past two years over two thousand dollars mm -hmm. in merch and prints and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I have another painting that's I haven't even sold it yet, but I've been still selling stuff with it. I've still been selling prints and merch. It's all um, made me almost a grant. Like yeah. another a, a painting that I sold for one fifty, I I've made twelve hundred dollars off it in the past two years off of prints yep. and merch. So like there's if if you're really trying to put food on the table, that's do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um so i just wanted to kind of back that up but um the guy with the sports stuff so i i was talking to somebody recently who said they have a lot of good luck at fundraisers because like donating a a work of art and taking a cut of the donation um and what he said was that it was it this is a fundraiser for like a local hospital and what he said was look people are there to spend money for a good cause, mm -hmm. and, and so they're willing to spend more. And also, it's a tax write-off for them, so that's a thing to consider. And it's also if you're donating a portion of the proceeds, that portion is a tax write-off for you too. So I just had to share that because the, the sports guy, if there is a, a a sports figure that has a foundation or something or some sort of good cause, you can go to their gala maybe donate some some paintings or something like that and make some money off of that gala and gain some recognition or some some visibility to the to that particular crowd you know so i just want to kind of put that out there as an idea yeah there's uh, there's i'm i'm extremely pro charity across the board and let, let me say a couple of things i was raised to take giving very seriously i don't give anywhere near enough i should give more but real giving 
should be done uh, incognito, right? Where you don't get any recognition, you don't get anything after. That's just important to say. Now, charity, we're getting into marketing there, okay? I've worked with all kinds of charities. They're all rackets and outfits for the most part. So knowing that, you can feel good about going into them and saying, what's up? So what I like, the way to play it, is 100% donate the piece of artwork, okay? But 100%, it's only worth donating the piece of artwork if you're finding out who is bidding on it and getting the email addresses. If you don't, then eh, the efficacy goes away. We got a gal that's out in Ireland, and she's done this a couple of times now, and she genuinely has a heart for the charity in question, okay? There's great charities out there. I'm not trying to be cynical. And she's like, I'm going to donate these two pieces, okay? And she'll donate whatever it is, $1,500, $2,000 of the art. And then she puts... One one dollar euro, five dollar euro, twenty five dollar euro, fifty dollar euro, a hundred, five hundred, and a thousand items into her art storefront store, and so they're items in the store, and people go into the store, they buy the ticket, okay, that that they want, it goes hundred percent of the proceeds go to charity, but she captures all of their information, and then she gives all of the names to to the charity person, okay, at the silent auction, and they pull it all out of the hat and announce however they do it. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. That is an extremely intelligent way to do it. That is on cool. the sports That's thing, cool. though, on the sports thing, to give this back to Chuck, this I, I'll probably release this on the podcast in in, in some time. Okay, there's I, I've had seasons in my life where I've been in and out of sports. Right now, I'm in soccer season. Um, very particularly interested in 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 a, the best American that we have that plays the game right now. This guy Christian Pulisic, arguably, and he plays at Chelsea. There are very intelligent ways to go about the sports marketing, okay? And the very intelligent way to go about the sports marketing is pick a niche, pick a player, go and find the media ecosystem that exists for that particular team, particular player, okay? And let me give you a for instance. Either on Twitter or on Reddit or on Facebook groups, depending on who the team is, there are a whole bunch of people that make their livelihood as content creators based on this particular subject, right? If I use the team that Christian Pulisic plays for, there's probably 15 different podcasts that are all Chelsea related, okay? There are probably 50 Twitter accounts that have over 250,000 followers that are just tweeting out news about this particular sport, right? And this particular team and everything that's going on it. All you have to do is get a spread, do some homework, get a spreadsheet going, find out who these folks are, get them into a list, and then start cold emailing them and saying, hey, I've got this killer piece of work of so-and-so. Um, I know you have an audience that's diehard about this. I know you're creating content for this audience that's diehard about this. I figured you probably want a way to entertain your audience. I've got some cool prints. Why don't I give you a couple of these? And you include my name in it and my Twitter handle in it. And you can just give it away for your audience for whatever you want. Okay, well, this guy's got 250,000 Twitter followers, and he's like, what's up, crowd? And ahead of the game this weekend, uh, I've got a special print giveaway that I'm doing. Retweet. You don't even care what they do. By such and such artist, and there's your at mention. For each one of those prints, and let's just say it costs you $65 ship, $75 ship, potentially has the reach to go out to hundreds of thousands of people getting your name out there, okay, as well as having your social handles in there. And let me tell you. Do you know how much more effective that is than giving Mark Zuckerberg that money in the form of a Facebook or an Instagram ad? 1,000 times more successful, okay? And when you contemplate, like, I could light that money on fire uh, uh, with a Facebook ad, or I could say, I'm going to take 10 of these prints at $65. It's going to cost me 600 bucks, but that's going to be my ad spend. And I'm going to do that six different times in six different niches and see what happens and see what comes back. My guess is you'll probably four to five X your investment, especially if one of the sales isn't original. So there you go, Chuck. Take that one and run. Yeah, Chuck's giving me the thumbs up. All right, what else, my dear? All good? Otherwise? Good. Wonderful. You guys are letting me off easy on a Monday. Um, any final questions, guys, gals? Yep, Shane's, Shane's coming back in. Go ahead, Shane. Just about the pricing, and, and I did uh, join a demo with uh, – uh, anyway. One of them. Uh, 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 not Randall, but th there's another one. Yep. Uh, question about the bad. So you here's here's I, I know where you're going with it. Here's what here's what, it, you, here's, here's what you have to decide. Is actually calling me right now. I'm going to send him to voicemail. Uh, no, uh, that that's not where I'm going. Uh, my, my question is, and that would maybe for them uh, would be, you know, you pay the startup fee. 
Uh, and then you're in, is it a contract for a year? Is it, how does that work? No, and then no, you can, you, we're super cool. It's still super small, scrappy company in the sense that like, you know, if you're bummed or you're upset or you're whatever, one month, six months, nine months, a year, two years, like it's all good. There's no, there's no contract. You're not locked into anything. Like you can cancel at any time. If you have like health issues or you're like, I want to take a pause, you can even put the whole thing on pause and then resurrect it later on down the line. That's not what you have to decide. We're, you know what we cost. We're not the cheapest by any stretch of the imagination. I think if you want it bad enough and you're, and you're like, I'm willing to give this thing a three to five year run, you're ready to sign up and you're good to go. If you're wishy-washy about it, then don't. Then don't. Like everyone, everyone in our instant gratification like age thinks that like, you know, there's this magical light switch that you just flip and boom, you have a business. That doesn't work this way, especially not in this industry. You've got to grind for a couple of years. If you are willing to grind and, and you write that mental check, which is more than the money. I mean, the money's important too, but the mental check is like, I'm going to do the work for the next three to five years to get this where it needs to go. Then I believe that we are the best solution on the planet, not even close. But again, you have to do the work, right? Like if you look at the majority of people that are upset about art store friends that have signed on, that have been customers six months, nine months a year, they, they sign didn't up. Put, they, yeah, they sign yeah. up and they're just not putting in the work, and then they want to blame us for it. And it's like, well, hold on, that sucks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got experience as a flight instructor, and I, you know, I would have students that would show up and just think we're going to teach them. When I say, say, no, you have to study too. Yeah, you know, yeah. no. It's 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 amazing how many people just think if they pay big money to go to flight school that somehow they don't have to do anything, yeah. you know. But not the case. No, not so the case. I'm seeing that. So I think. Yeah have your own personal come to jesus on that on that issue if it if, if you feel like you've got it you're good to go right and you know the, the analogy i always give it's like whether you're making a three-hour drive or a 24-hour drive the same thing always happens at the very end of the drive you start getting real antsy you know are we there yet are we there yet oh man my back hurts my body sore when you know in your head that it's a three-hour drive it doesn't matter you'll still do it two hours and 30 minutes in right you start <laughs> shifting in your chair holding your back and then in a 24 hour drive, because you know, it's a 24 hour drive, you blow through hour three, hour five, hour 10, hour 20, because you know, I'm not close. Like you have to have the right mental perspective of what it's going to take to get there. And then once you do, you know, you, you, you got a great suite of tools and support with us to get you there. Yeah. I don't expect to, uh, if I do sign up, I don't expect to, to do that. I guess I just kind of wanted to know to have all the information in front of me, you know, if for some reason. I did, would I have to pay another startup fee or no, anything like that? No, no, none of that. And you can upgrade or downgrade plans at any point in time. Really, you know. Downgrade? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you get, what, you get your money back? No, you don't get your money back, but there's like. Oh, just oh, go from a, from a monthly to, yeah. Monthly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd hire to lower monthly, the, whatever, whatever yeah. the variations. The are only plan, I mean, why get the gold? Why get, or why get the, the two-tier they don't offer the AR. They don't are the only one that's, that's going to do it. It's going to be the top one, yeah. you know? Yeah. But what I'm saying is that like, you know, in some cases we have given the money back to, it's like still a cool company, you know, it's not like super bureaucratic out, like, you know, small team, good people. And you know, it, we have yeah. a lot of really good reviews for a good reason. Let's just say that way. Like when you, you know, when you read our reviews, I mean, I made an investment in Smug Mugs eight months ago. I bought their highest tier. I think I spent four or 500, you know. And at the time, I thought, based on the reviews I read, like, oh, this is the photographer's website hosting for photographers. Yeah. And I'm not happy, you know, like know, they don't I offer. Know, I know, it's just, I know, I know. I know. Like, it's just a well, I want it's a tour before I throw three grand. Uh, am I going to be, you it's, know? It's just a website. Like, that's what we, we learned that early, really early on in our career. We're like, okay, if we just build the best website and the best website technology, everyone will come here and it'll be great. And it's like, no, what we learned is no one has a website problem. Yeah. No one does. Everyone has a marketing problem. And until you yeah. start solving that thing, no one's got a damn business on their hand and that equals unhappy customers. Doesn't matter what website you have. Yeah. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's like, it, you know, it, where, do you, where would you like to have your empty restaurant, sir? Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you want to like it doesn't matter, um, which sucks. It would be a whole lot cooler if you could just launch the website and flip a flip a switch. And even, yeah. people don't like understand art stuff. It's like when I started, there was no outbound marketing whatsoever. My 
a buddy I grew up with started the company. Okay, so I've known him since we were literally second grade. Um, he's he had a background. He was he started a company that made paper for fine art reproduction called Breathing Color. Okay, he ran that for a bunch of years, and so he started the business. He started the business um, for print studios. So if you were a print studio that was servicing a bunch of artists and photographers and that type of business, you would sign up for art storefronts, and it would give you all of these tools that were great. Early on, he realized like that whole business is cooked because all the mom and pop shops, right when the printers launched, you know when G Clay started, mom and pop shops everywhere. Then the big guys started getting smarter, buying ink by the barrel, all the technology leveled out, and it's like the only the only one that matters is who's buying ink at the barrel. It's now all the mom and pops are gone. Okay, fine. I would write one blog post a week, put a ten dollar spend of Facebook ads behind it, and I had to do that for like three years of grinding to get us anywhere near like an, you know, an email list that was growing like decent social media following like 5,000 on each. That's how long it took us. Like it's yeah. just, you have to put that work in, but once you do all the beautiful things start happening, you have the business yeah. on your hands, you know? Yeah. 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 So have, have it come to Jesus on it. See, see what you think. What do you, what kind of, what kind of things do you train people to fly? Just all planes? Oh, that's my normal job. Yeah, I fly a Boeing 747. I fly for car. I fly a cargo airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my that's my regular work. I yeah. I have <clears throat> I work two weeks out of the month. I'm gone two weeks, and I'm home two weeks. But you know, when I'm gone, we fly all over the world. And then, but when I'm home, I have two weeks home. That's not to say that when I'm gone, I don't have time to do things mm -hmm. because I do. Yeah. Uh, you know, we you know, long 14, 15 hour flights, but then we'll have you know, sometimes 24, 30 hours in a hotel somewhere yeah. uh, before we have to go again. So, and, and so, uh, yeah, there's always Wi-Fi available and things like that. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, that's my, uh, that's, that's my job job. Yeah. But, but, you know, this is something that's kind of going to be a, a side gig mm -hmm. and possibly something to kind of help me uh, with retirement plans. I mean, I, we have to retire at 65. Granted, I'm only 47. The uh, FAA says, well, when you're 65, it's time for you to be done. So, you know, I want something that's going to start now and, and help me beyond that. You for know, sure. to, you can, uh, you so. can, you can run the country at 85, but you can't fly a plane. Yeah. Ima imagine right. that. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. That is scary. <laughs> but, yeah. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I I had no idea that that existed as a is a plane regulation, and now just yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, now they're trying to age to sixty seven, uh, but uh, right now it stands at sixty five. It was sixty uh, back in the early two thousands, and they managed to get it up to sixty five. And now, uh, you know, they're trying to push sixty seven. You can still fly a plane. Uh, you can still fly corporate. You can still fly, you know, an airplane. You just can't fly for what's called 121 operations, which is like passenger and cargo flying uh, anything under the regulation part 121. Got so, it. but yeah, you can still fly. You can, you can still fly, but gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I learned something cool. Thanks. Shane. Yeah. Safe, safe flights, safe flights. Um, all right, guys, I will send you a replay. Um, It'll have this video if you want to go back, watch anything, check any of the things out. I'll have some links in there. I can't remember. I, I, I know I talked about some posts and some various this, that's, and the others in the um, in the in the, the earlier video. So I will certainly send you links to all of those things. Um, should definitely subscribe to the podcast. It's totally free. It's totally awesome. It's called the Art Marketing Podcast. Um, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, you can find it. Like if you're on Apple or it doesn't matter, Android, if you're on all of them. Where do I have to type in here? Podcast, yeah. That's what it looks like, that disgusting orange logo with the headphones, art marketing podcast. Totally free, totally good. It'll help you. It'll keep you motivated, get you inspired, um, help you learn some good tactical day-to-day -day stuff. And then, you know, we go live. The, C the CEO and I both, some of you know that because you saw that earlier today, but we go live on Instagram all the time, right? So anytime you have a question, all you have to do is pop onto one of those streams and just hammer it out. Ask live. I like, love answering them. So you get hung up on something, anything that I'm talking about, anything – brand related pricing related niche related um literally pop in anytime love to see you and i hope you guys all have wonderful wonderful weeks and uh hope to see you around in the future